our piece on debate, which is not a debate. It's a forum. The, uh, these uh, candidates are going to be, uh, the forum is being presented by a governmental committee affairs, which is done by Mr. Frank Espinosa with the Chamber of Commerce. And I, all the candidates were invited and wanted to make a kind of family emergency, and I just want to make sure that everybody was invited and they all committed to participate. So I want to turn it on to Frank Espinosa so he can talk to you about the uh, what, what is your name? <coughs> My name is Carlos Cuellar, I'm the chairman of the uh, Harpinger. Uh, <laughs> Chamber, the <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to turn, uh, I'm going to turn it on to, uh, to Mr. Frank Espinosa, and thank you again, everybody, for being here. Let me face the audience, I guess. Okay, let me introduce our moderator this evening. Mr. Davis Rankin is co-host of the Drive Home Talk Show, which is on News Talk 710 KRV every weekday evening from 4 to 6 p.m., along with co-host Kennedy LaFave. He has worked for more than 30 years as a talk show host and radio and television news journalist for both KURB and the KGBT TV, as well as a newspaper, newspaper reporter and legislative aide and press secretary to a statewide candidate in Texas. He has also been a desk assistant and news clerk uh, for CBS News and the CBS Evening News for Mr. Dan Rather. He is a graduate of the Southern Methodist University of Dallas and he is past president of Futuro McAllen, a civic organization in McAllen. Please welcome our moderator, Mr. Davis Rankin. Now, we went to SMU, my kids go to A&M. <laughs> now, one thing I forgot to clear is which mic, do, there's three microphones, which ones do we use? They all work? All right. Uh, this will be a little awkward. I'm not sure who more awkward for me or you. Normally I would speak to the crowd, but uh, let me go ahead and give the ground rules. Each candidate will have three minutes for an opening and a closing statement, and you have two minutes to answer each question uh, that I will pose to you. All the questions uh, were developed by the Governmental Affairs Committee, the Harlingen Chamber, uh, and no one has seen them. Uh, none of the candidates are supposed to have seen them. In fact, they were very closely held. Um, the timekeeper is sitting right here. Uh, you will get a 30-second warning. If you go over that, then you'll be asked to stop. Usually this is not a problem, but if people get out of hand, then they have to be kept down. Otherwise, it, it gets away from us. Uh, address all your remarks to the audience and not to each other. If you don't hear the question, then go ahead and ask for it to be repeat, repeated. And audience members, uh, please uh, no applause and uh, try to keep uh, disruption to an absolute minimum. Um, in terms of how we're going to do the questions, uh, we're just going to go sort of randomly. I developed a s system so that uh, over time, uh, no one is, you're not in the same place hearing the question all the time. So the first guy doesn't get the first question all the time. Uh, they will uh, get it at different places, a different order as we go along. District 3, Mike Mesmar and Lorenzo Hernandez are here. For District 4, Jerry Prepachal. Uh, Basilio uh, Sanchez was not here, as you heard, and District 5, Joy Trevino and Victor Leal. So the first question goes first to Mike Mesmar. Harlingen is a certified retirement community as designated by the state. This designation was good for five years and is due to expire during the upcoming, upcoming term of office. Will you vote to fund the designation program and promote our community as a quality retirement community, or will you choose to let that designation expire? And please explain. Yes, uh, on, on refunding, but we actually need... I think I've screwed up. We need just to have the opening statements first. That's right. Okay. So, it'll get better. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Mike Mesmore. <coughs> For those who don't know me, I'm originally from Ellicottville, Pennsylvania, outside of Pittsburgh. It's a rather tough steel town. It is made up of immigrants, just like my family. Uh, we all came over on the boat before World War I, and and a bunch of Italians came over after World War II. Uh, it was a steel mill seven and a half miles long, employed 15,000 people around the clock. It was hard living. 
I learned a lot there. I went to Penn State uh, branch campus for a year, graduate of the University of Pittsburgh with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and I graduate of Vanderbilt University with a Master's in Nursing. So yes, I'm an RN. Yes, I'm a family nurse practitioner, retired. Um, done all sorts of things in my life. Currently, for the last 20 many years, I uh, have had a couple of businesses. I manage money for people and companies. I manage tens of millions of dollars. I understand how businesses are run. I see how businesses go bankrupt. And I know how businesses struggle. And I, I have the odd view that Harlingen actually is a $70 million corporation. It has a CEO, it has a CFO, it has a legal department, it has a board of directors, of which I am currently one, and I am reapplying for my job. The city must be run as a business. Uh, I've said for years and years, governments at best are inefficient and worse, they kill people. Um, my goal is to increase the efficiency of the city of Harlingen government to make this a better place to live to bring down companies, factories, to have so that we can have employment, we can have middle class employment, so that we do have people and money to spend on retail, and to make this a pretty cool community with its parks and everything else that comes along with being a, a great place to live. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hernandez? Do I have hair everything from out there? <laughs> My name is Lorenzo Hernandez. For y'all who don't know me, I'm the current vice president for the Texas State Teachers Association. It's an organization you know, that defends employee rights for uh, school district employees who are part of our membership. Uh, I had a great opportunity uh, last week, so I can show you a sign of leadership that I've uh, gotten. Uh, I was interviewed by the National Education Association. It's an organization that uh, advises the president, whichever presidential candidate is up there, on about educational topics. Well. Through the leadership roles that I've had in my organization, I'm actually going to be featured on their February issue nationwide. So that's a milestone for me because I'm a, I'm a rising leader. I might not have all the answers for tonight's event. I might not have the correct answers, but don't see that as a sign of weakness. See that as a sign of, of a learning experience that I can uh, bring forward to the city. Thank you. Mr. Uh, my name is Gerald Perpichal, actually Jerry Perpichal, a lot easier to pronounce that way. <clears throat> and I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. I moved down here in 1971, uh, graduated from Gonzalez High in 1972, in my senior year. Uh, went to Texas, uh, Texas South Falls College, and in 1973 I met my future wife. And in 1978 uh, I got married, later on I had two kids, uh, Alicia and Aaron. Um, and I, I came from a city where things got done. And I remember when I first got married, um, I moved to Harlingen because my father-in-law died. So we stayed in Harlingen with my mother-in-law. And I saw, I've seen the uh, continuing deterioration <laughs> of District 4. So it just got to the point when the opportunity came about, I just decided to go ahead and see if I could change things. Um, and I've worked uh, very hard in the district, but I've had a lot of help. City staff, um, volunteers. Um, but the thing, though, is this, is that I, I think one of the things that we can be proud of, city commissioners, the last two and a half years we've had a lot of growth. And we've created a lot of growth. And we're just going to keep continuing creating a lot of growth. Because Bass Pro was actually, was actually turning out to be a catalyst that started everything. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, we're trying to catch up in some of the districts with uh, infrastructure, which we're working on. Uh, but the, uh, the city, for a while, was, became uh, stagnant as far as growth. And it just got to the point where uh, I wanted to stand up and fight to get things back to where they should be. I mean, right now, City of Orange is ranked number seven out of the cities in, Brown, in, the, in the valley. When I turned over 25 years ago, we were ranked one, two, and three, always with Brown and McCallum. And there are a lot of projects we're working on that's even going to make things a lot better. Um, and we need to get to that point. I mean, the city of Providence should not take second place to any city in the valley at all. So, thank you. Good
Hayes. Thank you for being here, and thank you for the Chamber of Commerce for inviting us to this special forum. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Joey Trevino. Born and raised here in Harlingen. I grew up here, went to Harlingen uh, High School. Uh, went off to college, Southwest Texas State, and majored in urban and regional planning. Uh, came back, uh, I have a degree in urban and regional planning. I worked for a municipality, uh, city of Westerville as an intern and then came back again in the early 90s and became the director of planning. Uh, since then I've become a consultant for municipalities. I've uh, worked in municipalities across all South Texas and, and, and here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, I'd like to uh, point out that it's, had been a, it's been an honor to serve as city commission throughout the years here. Uh, I think we've accomplished quite a bit here in Harlingen and, but a lot of work remains. And I have the vision and to help continue the progress. I have the experience and the leadership qualities. I, I have the courage to put people over politics. And I think that's very important. And I, I can lead with compassion. I have the ability to look at, at problems honestly. And, and I'm capable of making the right decision. So I I'm ask you again to support me in my re-election campaign. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank everybody that's putting this forum together. I'd like to <coughs> thank the Harlingen Chamber of Commerce for sponsoring our event, our host, the Harlingen CISD, for allowing us to use this room. Davis, I'd like to thank you for taking time out to be our moderator. And I especially want to thank the audience that came out this evening. Uh, I'm going to take a different tack. I'm going to I'm going to explain some things about me to you. And so. I have a share, uh, I want to share a vision with each and every one of you that I have. My name is Victor Leal. I've worked very hard and I've been very blessed to be a successful business person here at Harlingen, Texas. I'm a longtime resident and I'm a homeowner. But there's some really important decisions that have to be made this election cycle. And I think we need to, to address them. The issues that separate myself from my opponent. I will be able to vote on all issues without a question regarding a conflict of interest. This will allow our city to be fully represented by all five city commissioners. I will use discretion and discernment on issues concerning employment and personnel issues. I would not have voted to give our city attorney back to back $25,000 pay raises for a total of $50,000 during the first 13 months of their employment. I think that's fiscal irresponsibility. What kind of message is being sent to our city employees? Our greatest asset that we can have is our city employees. Attracting and retaining all of the city employees should be of utmost concern. I won't be influenced by others or outside interests. And I will make myself available to the citizens of Arlington, Texas. I will not serve on any other board that could have conflicts with the Harlington city business. I'm going to break barriers that will inhibit both new and old businesses for growth and prosperity here in our city. I want to utilize current city employees to enhance services by using a team approach. I will empower our city employees by giving them proven management techniques that will increase their all overall morale, improving the productivity at all levels of the workforce. I have an enthusiastic and open mind for new business and economic growth for our city. I see our city as a business, and our city needs a business person as city <coughs> commissioner of District 5. My goal is to serve our community in a way that exemplifies my service to God. Tonight, I'm asking you to vote for a more prosperous, successful, and business-friendly Harlington. Thank you. All right. First question back again to Mike Mesmar. Harlingen is certified retirement community now as designated by the state. This will uh, this is good for five years and is due to expire during the upcoming term of office. Will you vote to fund the designation program and promote the community as a qualified retirement community or will you choose to let that designation expire? And please explain. Yes, I uh, vote for it again. Um, we have had quite a turnover in the um, 
CBB, the uh, Visitors uh, Bureau, Convention of Visitors Bureau. We need some consistency, and we need just not to vote for something and toss money at it, but to actually do it. Uh, the Winter Texans spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars here every year, and Harlingen needs to capture some of that. It is a lifeblood to the valley. And so we must work with the Winter Texans, work with the park owners, whether it's entertainment or our own parks, things to do and things to see, because uh, you know it's a great place to retire to. I did. I retired here 31 years ago, but yet I continue to work. I, the, under the uh, the method that we have laid out here, each candidate gets a fresh question. So, Mr. Hernandez, your question is. The city appears to have a reputation for having a cumbersome and difficult process for new commercial construction or building expansion. What course of action would you pursue to correct this problem or perception of the city? Can you repeat the question, please? The city of Harlingen appears to have a reputation for having a cumbersome and difficult process for new commercial construction or building expansion. What course of action would you pursue to correct this problem or perception of the city? Well. I think we need a, I don't have the answer to that question. I need to educate myself more on that. I'm going to pass it on. All right, question number three goes to Jerry Prepachal. What do you feel the city can better do to support and encourage existing businesses in Harlingen to grow and expand? Well, one of the things is, is that we have the chamber, okay, and uh, they can help. We have the EDC. They can help me on the EDC 4B. They can also help. And the way it works is this, is that businesses that are having problems or businesses that want to come into the city, and I'm willing to bet 99% of the time, they're, they're contacting the chamber. That's their first stop. From there, they go to the EDC. Okay? The EDC is the one that handles new businesses. There hasn't been a business that the EDC has approved for any type of funding to either expand their business or grow their business that the city commission has turned down since I've been there. So uh, you know, it's a process that has to be taken. Uh, and that's my, that's my answer. All right, question number four goes to Joy Trevino. What will you do to bring more businesses to Harlingen, thereby creating more and better jobs? Well, first of all, uh, I think we must have an open uh, process. Uh, we need to have a, a, uh, a one-stop shop to, to bring in businesses from, from the planning department, engineering, waterworks, and, and things of that sort. Next, in, 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 order, in order for us to grow uh, northward, uh, we need to improve the impact fees that we have currently with our Arlington Waterworks and also work with our Real Honda Water Supply uh, Corporation neighbor to the north of us and see if we can negotiate uh, working with their uh, water rates and, and impact fees because that's been a hindrance to new development in the north. Uh, also, I'd like to, you know, we need to make it customer service friendly. Uh, Arlington's always had a reputation of being difficult to, to do business in. Uh, We've made strides lately to train our, our employees for the customer service uh, techniques, uh, been to seminars uh, with, on uh, talking about the building codes, uh, international building codes, and, and, and improving our inspectors and our code enforcement people and our planners to, to open, welcome developers and builders with open arms, thus making it easier for them to develop and open business. Another thing I would like to create, maybe uh, provide better incentives for existing businesses and as well as a new business. Uh, I think we can try to find some kind of way to do some maybe uh, tax incentives, rebates, or something of that sort. The next question goes to Mr. Leal. What can the city do to build on the momentum created in the retail sector by Bass Pro Shops and Cameron Crossing? The city needs to promote the fact that we do have these new developments on that side of town. That's in District 5. Uh, 
the EDC is important, but I don't think EDC is as important in the retail sector as it is in the light industrial. I think the retail sector is where we need to start approaching other companies. We have companies that have come into the outlet mall, and so I don't think we've done enough to promote the fact that we have Bass Pro Shop. I understand we're supposed to be having a SAMS come into the area. We currently have a Longhorn project there. I, I think the city just need to get out, find where the retailers are, are at, allow them to know that we have a, a friendly area where they can start developing. We have that whole mall section out there. We have the uh, Cameron Crossing, which is the new Bass Pro Shop. We have the Coles Corner. Or I'm not sure what the name of that exact, I call it Coles Corner, but it's that little corner where Coles is at, Chuck E. Cheese. And, and we need to let them know that we have a very good retail environment. Mexico will start coming once they have a destination. And, and I think we're just jumping the gun too long. It takes a while to develop those patterns. But once the customer knows that it's there, the retailers will come. But we need to let the message be heard. Along with, with you know, the, the, we're bringing winter Texans down here. They haven't been down here but one season since we opened this new area. But we need to, to really put the word out that we're business friendly. Like Mr. Trevino, one-stop shop. My question is, is, why haven't we already done that? That should have been done long ago. Downtown has it. You go, you, you want to inquire downtown, they give you a packet and say, these are things you need to do to open a business and be successful downtown. Why haven't we done that? Why don't we have an advocate for somebody that walks into City Hall and says, I want to open a business, and that person be responsible to make sure that business is successful? What is our closure rate? I'm a businessman. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to come back over here and start now in District 3 with Lorenzo Hernandez. This question is, what do you believe the city should do to assure that the new four-year medical school will be developed at the Regional Academic Health Center in Harlingen. Can you ask that again? What do you believe the city should do to assure that the new four-year medical school will be developed at the Regional Academic Health Center, or RAC, in Harlingen? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that question. I pass it on. Mike Mesmar, Harlingen has been called a very clean city and the city's initiative to remove and demolish abandoned structures is appreciated. Please give the voters your ideas on more ways to deal with remaining unsightliness and make Harlingen a more attractive, even more attractive city. Include thoughts on entry points into the city. You know, it's, uh, I'm smiling because uh, we've been making headroads these last couple of years including just recently involving Union Pacific uh, Railroad knocking down the building. Uh, we're currently in negotiations with Sun Valley and what's the, um, what's the hotel? Sun Valley Hotel? Is that it? Oh, right. Yeah, Sun Valley. Okay. <coughs> we're in negotiations there and uh, we're coming close to ink being dry on the paper. The entrances, uh, we talked about this this past Wednesday at the meeting, the entrances uh, using brick pavers, uh, even astroturf or their artificial grass, whatever the term is. Apparently, uh, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, which gets, what, six, eight inches of rain a year, uh, has done it and done it profitably and done it well to make it look attractive. So we're looking at those things. You know, I worked with an internist. He left here in 81, and a few years ago, he and his wife came back from Minneapolis and asked him the question. I said, so what do you think of Ireland yet? And they looked at each other, and their first response was, what is it with all the empty buildings? You know, I've been on uh, duty now six months. I'm asking tons and tons and tons of questions, and gathering intelligence, and checking things off, and trying to solve the easy things first. Um, it is a conundrum. But the city is working on it. Of course, all we need is time and money, and we have time, we don't have the money. All right, the next question to Jerry Prepachal. Name Harlingen's greatest strength and greatest weakness. How will you capitalize on the strength? How would you improve the weakness? Well, the greatest strength that we have is we're the only city that really has room to grow. Um, we have the best airport in the valley that's not landlocked. Um, one of the other greatest strengths that we have is with the EDC, both boards and also with the chamber for uh, bringing new businesses in. I think one of the greatest weaknesses we have is that in some of the districts, it's been neglected for the last 30 years. So we're playing catch-up. 
you know, when you think about demolitions, there was 104 demolitions just in my district alone. Okay? So we're playing catch up, not only with the demolition, but with the infrastructure. Now, when you have businesses that are looking at Harlesen to come in, well, let's make this town look as good as we can. Because that's how you're going to attract them. Because most of the businesses that are coming down here are bringing their people with them. Okay? And they're going to turn the city to see what it looks like. So we need to really work on the beautification of the city, too, which we already have been doing. Um, but uh, that's what we need to do. That, the greatest weakness is getting the city back to looking like it was 30 years ago. That's the biggest weakness we have. But we're working on it, and we've done a lot of, uh, we've actually made a lot of strides in that, in, in uh, getting demolitions done, repairing the cities and beautification, like Gutierrez uh, Park and all that. All right, the next question goes first to, goes to Victory Leal. What's the one thing at the end of your term that you will have accomplished? <coughs> wow. The one thing that I'm going to have accomplished would probably be a, a city commission that works together with one common goal, which is to attract business to Harlingen, to build the infrastructure in our city, to be able to have an open it up channel of communication that the citizens can come forward without complaints, but rather praises. I think if we work together, if we all have a same cause, the same common cause, which is to grow this city, you know, I, I hear these questions that are all about, you know, the, the, the things, what's strong about the city, what's bad about the city. You know, the, our greatest asset is the fact that we're real proud. We're at the center, we're the hub of the city. We're I mean, the hub of the valley, I'm sorry. We're the hub of the valley. People need to locate here. I mean, if somebody's going to have, have a, a business that's going to be delivery, why do they want to locate in McAllen or Brownsville? I think the one thing that I'm going to be remembered for is the fact that I brought unity. I brought a management style. I brought team play. It's one thing I, I really want to emphasize. My management style isn't me. It's a we. We have to do these things. So when you say, what is the thing that I'm going to accomplish? I think it's the thing that we're going to accomplish. And the next question, Mr. Trevino, why do you want to serve on the City Commission? Good question. This will be my, once I win, it will be my second term. Uh, I'm, like I said before, I'm born and raised here in Harlington. Uh, I've raised my kids here in Harlington. I'm very proud of Harlington. When I left to work in Florida for a while, when I went to school in the Southwest Texas State, I longed to be in Harlington. Harlington is my hometown. Uh, it's a jewel of the valley. We were one, two, three, way back when. We were the capital city of, the, of, of Harlingen. In, in, my, uh, in my work across South Texas, and I've seen what other communities have become, and we became stagnant for a while. But now, uh, I want to continue the progress that we've created the last three and a half years. And I think it's been positive progress. So that's what I want to, why I want to be city commissioner here in Harlingen. We're going to start now with uh, Mr. Prepachal and go this way, then come back and finish up here. What do you consider your most important accomplishment? Just one accomplishment or all of them? <laughs> Three minutes. Um, you have two minutes. <laughs> um, I'll tell you the truth, I think one of the uh, biggest accomplishments that really helped the people in District 4 was all of the training projects, the new training projects that went in. Uh, we were putting, we were taking out 18 inch pipes and putting in four foot pipes. Um, I think that's, to me, that was a big accomplishment all over District 4. Uh, because one of the problems we've always had is flooding, even in a 5-inch or 6-inch rainfall. And I really believe that all that's going to be taken care of by that. People won't have to worry about water getting into their house. And that was a major project. So if that's something that's just, if you're only going to give me one, then that's the one. All right. Next question goes to Joy Trevino. 
In terms of economic development, what percentage should the mix be regarding incentives for new business versus retaining or expanding existing business? Well, I get that question a lot, why we are try trying to attract people from outside of the city when we're not hold helping our own that have been in business for many, many years. So I, I know it's important to bring other businesses in, but I do want to take care of our existing businesses and expand their businesses also and, and develop some type of innovative uh, program where we can create new businesses here uh, from our hometown group, uh, hometown grown uh, people here from the valley, uh, establish an incubator, business incubator or an innovative technology fund uh, in order to to create new business. I want Harlingen to be a, a, uh, a hub for corporate headquarters in the future. I think we, we have the, the skills, I think we have the people uh, to, to do this, and uh, I, I think it will be more of a 50-50 split right now to bring new businesses and, and, and 50 to, to encourage and expand existing businesses. We, we, if our small businesses, our existing businesses here in Arlington aren't successful, then the big businesses are going to look at us. Mr. Leal has been said that many cities in the Valley are seen as territorial and not unified when it comes to economic development endeavors. Do you agree? And would, what would you do different to benefit the local economy? I do agree that, uh, I, I think it's just a mindset. You know, the, the Valley has always been, uh, you know, I live in Harlingen and you live in San Benito. Uh, I, I grew up in Brownsville and my first business endeavor was in McAllen. And it was very strange when I was in McAllen because I had people applying for a job in McAllen, Texas from far, from Alamo, from Mission. And it was very, very different because they, they had a different mindset. In, in Brownsville, people didn't think about driving to Harlingen. If you were in, in Los Fresnos, it was like, oh, we're going to drive all the way to Brownsville. Um, I, I think we, on, a, on a, a chamber level or a, a, a more of a, um, a, a, a valley-wide level, we need to start carrying these down. I think as a city commissioner, I need to know who the other players are in my area, pre -meta. Uh, uh, San Benito, you know, as we start talking with these people, you know, right now San Benito's having a, a difficult time with both their EDC and with their uh, chamber. When I was in the auto parts business, we suffered the same thing. I was with the Automotive Wholesalers of Texas. It was an association. Well, all the other associations adjoining to Texas were failing. And the Automotive Wholesalers of, of Texas became a regional association. When I was reading about San Benito and their chamber failing, you know, one thought I had was maybe the Harlingen Chamber should figure out a way to extend a Paul branch to San Benito. I don't know. It, it happened just recently when the Hispanic Chamber failed. Uh, but I think as a city commissioner, we need to be thinking about what are we doing to bring new business and what are we doing for the existing businesses. That, that is correct. Uh, it's, it's harder to it's harder to gain an old customer, but it's harder to gain a new customer than it is to retain an existing customer. Mike Mesmar, Harlingen has a beautiful international airport that's primed for still more growth. What will you do to foster that growth? <clears throat> Currently, the airport board is an independent board. It's an independent organization within the structure of Harlingen. It's run by business people, it's profitable, and it uh, should continue to be that way. Um, we cannot mix water and we cannot mix airport in with city. Uh, as the joke goes, I just read it today on that business headline that um, first God made the idiots as practice and then he made politicians. Um, and, and the danger is, is taking a competent business such as the airport and diluting its value, diluting its assets, uh, commingling money with the city. Uh, the people know what to do. Of course, then you have the, the macroeconomic picture globally, United States-wise. Uh, I, I believe we're in a, in a starting the eighth year of a depression. Gas prices, fuel prices are very high, air traffic's down, 
American Airlines filed bankruptcy earlier this year. It's a tough business to be in. Uh, but once again, we have assets such as the flight with Sun Country uh, to and from um, Minneapolis for winter Texans. Um, we just need to let these people work the business as a business and deal with what needs to be done with. Mr. Hernandez, what will you do to support business in the Harlingen area? Well, on that topic, I would, if I win, I would like to team up with the Chamber of Commerce because right there we have lifelong leaders. They own businesses, and uh, I'm a rising leader. So there's the opportunity to uh, bring in those businesses and all those ideas would have to come from those lifelong leaders uh, to educate myself on that. Thank you. Let's see. All right, the next one for you, Mr. Prepachal. How will you help foster a positive business climate in the community? Positive business climate? <clears throat> well, um, one of the true facts of a positive business climate is the Chamber of Commerce. And they do a very good, uh, very good job of doing that. Um, the other positive way to do that is that business is coming in. We talked about a one-stop shop uh, before they were actually going to planning and zoning. And they actually have a booklet, and everything is in that booklet. Permits, everything, how you need to start a business, and what you have to go through to do that. Um, as far as I know, the booklet has already been done. Um, Ken Clark was the uh, manager of the district, uh, or the uh, director of planning and zoning, has already finished it. We need to become a lot more business friendly, a lot more. Um, you know, code enforcement going out there and looking at a property and then going back to the office and typing out a uh, letter to the owner, it would have been a lot better if they would have just stopped and talked to the owner. You know, we have to, we're working, the people who work for the city, all these different departments, they're paid by the taxpayers. And that's the customer service. When you start doing that and give out better, better customer service, the entire atmosphere of businesses and everything coming here is going to change. Uh, and that's what we need to work on. We need to work on changing the atmosphere uh, of these businesses coming in. And that's how you're going to grow the city. That's how you're going to help all these small businesses, or even big businesses. Next, we go to Mr. Leal. How can the city improve the promotion of Harlingen as a tourism and retail destination? You know, to I don't, I don't know how we can improve it. I know that we, uh, we, we run publications in, in northern communities, I believe in some of the, the RV type Affairs. I'm not sure if, I'm, I'm not familiar enough with how the CBD is actually promoting Harlingen, but I think there are trade magazines that we can advertise in. Um, you know, I, that's just really a tough question. I'm not prepared to answer it right now. I, I, I just think that there are ways I don't know enough about that topic, and so uh, I, I will be willing to say that I don't know something. Thank you. Is it possible to <clears throat> skip the question you're going to give me so I can answer the question you gave him? No. 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 Okay. Harlingen appears, Mr. Trevino, Harlingen appears to have made great strides in improving the quality of life with hiking and biking trails, water park, and soccer fields. What are your plans to improve on this in order to attract new business? Well, that's a good question. That's something uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, I think quality of life is important for new businesses. Uh, people that move into the community look at those things. We've done the parks. We have probably the best park system in the valley. Uh, we're creating hike and bike trails. Uh, I think we need to develop other opportunities in the arts and music. Uh, we have a great uh, 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 venue on the Arroyo. Uh, in the summer, I'd like to expand that throughout the whole year, and we have one coming up in, in November uh, with the 
with music. Um, the other thing I would like to do to improve quality of life is, you know, it, we've demolished hundreds and hundreds of buildings across the city. Now it's time to build. Uh, let's develop a program to build new homes in the, that area, uh, redevelop our, our, our core of the city. Uh, another eyesore is our old sewer plant on Taft Street. I know it's not in my district, but it, it's close to my mom's house. And I think uh, the city owns the property. I think we can get uh, developers interested in, in developing some type of venue on the, on the Arroyo uh, to coincide with our Blues on the Hill. Uh, I know Valley North Star, that I can be there much often. Maybe we'll have to buy that building. The price just went up. Uh, uh, let, let's look at it. We have a, a great birding center right next to that area on Taft Street. Let's, let's work on, on our goals on those goals that are positive for the city and, and good for the quality of life. The next question goes first to Mr. Hernandez. What's your opinion on the city elections being held in November now instead of in May, and why? I think it's great that they have it in November, and uh, it goes on a long way to federal elections. And, you know, one of the biggest problems throughout any city is, you know, a failure of people to turn up and vote. I think that's the biggest problem out there. There's not enough people to go out and vote. And usually you got a bigger turnout during a, you know, national election. So I think it's a great idea that they put it on November. Thank you. Mr. Mesmar, how do you feel about the increase in the travel budget for city commissioners? And if you're in favor of it, what steps will you follow to provide accountability to the citizens to justify the costs of such travel? Nobody told me. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> All right. That's, that's an answer, too. Let me see. All right. We're going now to Mr. Trevino for the next question. What do you believe is the commissioner's most important duty to the citizens of Harlingen and why? Well, I think it's looking at problems honestly and bringing, <coughs> putting the people over over politics. Uh, I get calls every day. Uh, if there's an issue, I mean, we have issues on potholes. We have issues on trash pickup. Dogs uh, running wild. Um, not being able to get a permit to build. I, I think we need to, as a city commissioner, I re represent citizens. I don't re represent the city to the citizens. I'm there to, to be a part of of helping the citizens grow and, and getting the things that they need to get done. Mr. Lau, what is your stance on term limits for city officials? And if elected, how many terms of office do you intend to seek and why? My personal term limit position is no one should serve one position for greater than 10 years across any <coughs> position whether it be state, local, or here at the city commission. My goal is to serve a minimum or a maximum of two terms. That is my goal. My goal is to leave a legacy for the next city commissioner. Uh, one thought that I've had from day one, the day that I'm elected, I'm to start looking for leaders that can be mentored and learn what it's like to be a leader in this city. But senior leadership is, is different from state or, or, or county. Well, I'm going to say more state. You know, state is more legislative. We're supposed to be the board of the city. We shouldn't be answering phones and taking care of people. Our job is to motivate that city manager, those department heads, to empower those employees to do those jobs. If my phone is ringing, they're not doing their job. I agree with Mr. Trudeau. But what I don't agree with, that is not my job to make sure that permit gets issued. My job is to make sure that city manager is doing his job. That's how business works. Do you, you know of any CEO that goes into Walmart and says, get out of the way, let me show you how to ring up a cash register? It doesn't happen that way. You have very good managers which train very good employees. Our Chick-fil-A down here is rated one of the top Chick-fil-A's. Not because of the people. It's because of that man. Well, I'm going to point it. Let me say it. State that. Not because of a, a, a uh, manager pushing the people. It's
It's the manager training those people and bringing them up to let them perform to their very best. Performance comes from the people, not from the manager. Okay. All right, here's one for Mike Mesmar. What experience do you have that qualifies you to serve as a Harlingen City Commissioner? I'll do a Jerry line. <laughs> uh, quite a bit. Uh, lifelong leader. Educated. A little bit of wisdom. Very life experience. Being raised in an immigrant community. Hearing different languages spoken all the time. Being with people of different, uh, coming from different countries. You know, Arlington's a great place, the valley's a great place. Love the music, love the food, love the people. Um, into music, I saw Flaco Jimenez back in 1976 in Pittsburgh. And I had uh, Lydia Mendoza records back in the late 70s. Uh, of course, Frank Fender was always cool uh, in, in the late 60s. But, so, um, I look at it as a business, because Harlingen is a business, and the better the business can be run, the more that we can have better people, because you want to surround yourself with better people and successful people in any business venture. And doing that begats success, and, su and success is a wonderful disease to have and to spread. Mr. Hernandez, it's said that Harlingen lacks adequate facilities to attract conferences and conventions. What's your opinion on this issue and how do you intend to address it? Well, conventions, centers, Bacallan has one, Brownsville has one. They attract businesses, they attract teams, they attract shows. I think we need one so we can attra uh, attract those same opportunities to the city of Harlingen. Uh, we need more events here. All right, Mr. Prepachal, you have the last question. In light of the presidential election, whoever wins, how do you see that person affecting the city of Harlingen? Uh, as far as the presidency, uh, I really don't see either one of them affecting the uh, situation with the city of Harlingen. I do know of one person that's running for Congress that will affect the situation here in Harlem. Um, you know, when you when you start doing the federal government, it's a whole different ballgame. You know, red tape is from here to Africa. Okay, and I mean, it, it took two years just for HUD to hand down the uh, funds for uh, the drainage projects because of all the flooding from Dowling. And this is 2012. That's four years. Okay. I mean, I would like to see a lot more participation from the federal government here. Uh, but I think what we need to do is we need to work with our representatives and our congressmen and our state senators. That's where we will uh, eventually get what we need for the city of Harlingen. Let them have the project and let them bring it up to the higher federal agencies. I think that's where it starts, not from the presidency down. All right, it's time for closing statements. You all have three minutes each. You don't have to take all three minutes, though. And I know people were coming in during the event. Uh, we had a list of questions, um, which very few people had seen. I read down the list, going up and down the, the, giving the candidates an opportunity to answer each question. Each candidate got a fresh question each time, which is why you didn't hear them repeated as in some forums. So let's get the closing statements now, starting with Mr. Leal. Well, once again, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight, and all the candidates that, that did participate. <clears throat> and I really want to address this to the voters of District 5, because that's what counts for me, because this is who's going to be electing me as the, the next city commissioner. We have a very important decision for this city. You've heard us up here talk about the different ways that we would handle city businesses. And it's really city business, it isn't city politics. We're talking about how do we grow this city? How do we make the city the jewel once again of the valley? We talked about inefficiency in the city. 
In a management, we look at this inefficiencies. Those are bottlenecks. That's what causes something not to move forward. You know, we, we all talked about what the bottleneck is, but I haven't heard anybody say, well, let's solve this. Let's get this done today. This isn't a difficult thing. If we have managers in our city, and let's ask them, let's demand from them accountability. When I was a sales manager, I would ask my salesperson, I want to see the call report. I want to know how many sales you how many calls you made for the week and how many sales you closed for the week. We need a closing ratio here in this city. You want to see new cities open, new businesses open up? Let's start making it mandatory. Who's going to be responsible to find out how many people inquired and how many businesses actually closed? And when I mean closed, I'm not closing the doors. We closed the sale. You know, there's nothing goes in the register until you close the sale. Get the check. I just want to address something. It's very difficult for me to sit here and know that all these things sound wonderful, but we have to be present. We have to be in that commission city room, the city commission room, to make these decisions. Okay? I have a leg up. I'm able to sit in the city commission room and vote on every single issue. I don't have any business with the city myself personally. I'm a businessman, but I don't have any business with the city. I don't have an employer that does business with the city. I have nothing that stands in the way for me being there 24-7 serving as that commissioner. But understand, I don't want to serve 24-7. I want to represent this city as that board of directors that we talked about. I want to see our city rise to the level. So I'm just saying, District 5 voters, we need 100% attendance at our city commission meetings so these important issues that you've heard tonight can get voted on. I may not know everything. I'm not the incumbent. I haven't been in city business. But I'm a business person. I'm a very fast study. And I'm willing to do this. I want to do this. I'm asking for every voter in District 5 to vote for me. Thank you. Mr. Trevino. Again, thank you, Davis, and thank you to the Chamber, and thank you to the School District for having us here today. Um, one thing I want to reiterate, I, I do have the experience, and I think it's going to be uh, essential for us uh, as a city to work regionally uh, throughout the whole valley uh, to, to accomplish what we need in, in growth and for the future. And I know all the players in the valley. It's not going to be a learning game for me. It's, it's something I do every day. So I know things are challenging. But I'm going to continue to help and improve what's going on here in the city of Arlington. Um, I'm going to take on the hard issues, our working families, our businesses, our seniors, and our veterans face. There's too much at stake for this reason I ask for your support. Mr. Repichel. Yeah, um, I like to say this. I like to thank everybody for coming. I like to thank the chamber for putting this on. You know, I almost didn't make it, but I did. So, uh, but, uh, I really believe the last two, two and a half years, the commission has worked very well together because that's where you've gotten the growth that you have right now. And if you take a look at sales tax receipts that are coming in, sales tax revenues, we're beating a lot of the other cities. So we are growing. Okay. I also believe that a city commissioner, if he gets a call from a, from a taxpayer, and even if it's not in his district, it should be his responsibility to answer that taxpayer. Whatever that taxpayer needs are, okay? I don't think, uh, I think the city staff is doing a remarkable job. We balanced the budget three times in a row. We haven't raised your property taxes. We froze taxes at 65 for the elderly. We've raised homestead exemptions from 4,000 to 10,000. We've got all these new retail businesses coming in. The Chris Boswell and Mayor put me on a beautification program, and we've done a lot to beautify the, the, the city. Um, so I really believe that the last two, two and a half years, we've been moving right along and working very well from there. So, uh, uh, and, you know, everything else is just uh, uh, icing on the cake. But I really believe that, uh, uh, that we've been doing great. You just have to take a look at this reform and see what's been done over the last two years. Uh, and uh, that's why I'm asking everybody here for their support for re-election for this report. 
Well, thank you. Well, thank you for everybody who held this event and everybody who came out and gave me the opportunity to ex at least answer some of the questions that I knew. Uh, it feels good being surrounded by lifelong leaders. Remember, leaders ain't born, they're made. And uh, when people think of the valley, I want them to think of Harlingen first as a great city. Remember, behind every great city is a great community, a great community of leaders. Thank you. Yeah, I've only been on the job six months, and there's uh, many miles to go before I sleep. And I hope I get uh, rehired for the job. What I've done so far, besides asking lots of questions, make lots of observations, the city website has been improved. It still needs work, but it's been improved. Security at City Hall has been improved. Locks have never been changed. Hundreds of keys out there. These key, these are military grade locks. They cannot be drilled, picked, or kicked in. The keys cannot be reproduced. When I brought this up in my first week, I was told, oh, Commissioner, that will cost money. And I said, so how much is a murder or a rape war? So the locks got changed. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, employees now have badges so that we can identify who's who and what are they doing here. Uh, we will have an alarm system, we will have external cameras, we will have interior cameras. We need to protect our people, we need to protect our physical plant, and we need to protect our inventory. It's a business, run it as such. Thank you. That's it. Will you all join me with an Applause for Davis Rankin. Yeah.